Kia ora, my name is Nikki Rogers Pirani. I am Mia's mum who's hiding over there. Um, I am mum to four girls and my husband has an older daughter so we have five girls all together and Mia is in the middle. Um, I've been a teacher for 15 years although since last April I haven't done a lot of teaching. Um, last April on the 23rd Mia was diagnosed with rheumatic fever. She had several sore throat infections in November, December 2014, which required antibiotics. Um, in the first week of February, a few weeks later, she started complaining of a sore hip. So I took her to the doctors. She had an x-ray and bloods, um, but nothing didn't show anything untoward. So we just put it down to growing pains. Um, Two weeks later, Mia got another throat infection, and this time it was much worse. She had lesions all through her mouth, on her tongue, inside of her cheeks, the roof of her mouth. She was given 10 days antibiotics, which um, were completed. The throat swab actually came back negative. Um, but since her hip x-ray, Mia still complained intermittently of aching joints, not just her hips. Um, on the 10th of April, I took Mia back to the doctor because although I couldn't pinpoint exactly what was wrong with her, I knew she wasn't her normal self. Some weekends she looked tired so I would make her stay home from sport, which she fought as she loved sports. I asked if Mia could be referred to ear, nose and throat as she often had sore throats. Um, she mentioned at different times that she had headaches, sore tummies, sore joints, etc. But I was, when I asked to be referred to ear, nose and throat, I was told well, not really, she hasn't had enough throat infections to be referred. How about I take a throat swab? So the throat th swab was taken, but the doctor mentioned that her throat looked fine, just a little red. So the throat swab was taken, and I never heard anything, and I didn't ring the lab to see what the results were, so I assumed it was fine. I didn't feel like I could push the whole ENT referral, because I felt a bit like an over-anxious mother. Um, Two weeks later, during the two weeks, so two weeks after she had the throat swab, her health began to decline faster, although some days she was her normal self. Two weeks later, I yelled out to Mia in the morning, get in the shower, Mia, <coughs> just before school, and I was wondering what was taking her so long. I walked down into the bedroom, and where she was, she was giggling and told me she couldn't walk. So I helped her into the shower, dropped all her sisters off at school and then headed up to the medical centre. While we are in the nurse's station, a nurse asked me if Mia had taken her 10 days of antibiotics as her throat swab two weeks prior had been positive. We were taken to the doctor's room straight away where she was diagnosed. We were then sent to Whangarei Hospital. She had a complete heart block. Sorry, I don't know. She had a complete heart block, and the specialist called, uh, came into the cubicle and said that she's going to have to be flown straight down to Starship. And as we were getting into the helicopter, this, the same specialist, he actually flew with us. They said they had to call in more staff because she was quite serious. So the same specialist walked me out to the helicopter, and he said, he said, we're very worried Mia's heart rate is going to drop. If that is the case, we won't be able to talk to you. It'll be all hands on deck. We will be doing recess. And I was just like, what the heck is going on? Because at that stage, I didn't actually know a lot about rheumatic fever. Um, so we spent nine weeks in three different hospitals, then six weeks pretty much on house arrest. <laughs> While in hospital, there were a lot of times that we could reflect on how we were even in there. Um, I couldn't understand how I didn't know about this disease as Mia had every symptom of rheumatic fever since February. Um, whilst in hospital I did a few days relieving just to keep some money coming in and June who is 
who was the rheumatic, June Hilton Jones, she was the rheumatic fever coordinator for Northland. She, she was, she came in to see us often, gave me a, a relieving teacher's kit on rheumatic fever so that I could do some work with the classes. Um, and I didn't want anyone else to go through what we had been through. So when a mum at school, Erica, asked me if I would like to get, uh, be on board and do a, fundra a cross-country fundraiser for, um, for NEST, Northland Emergency Services Trust, I jumped on board and thought it would be a great way to get the community educated about rheumatic fever. So my first stop was Vern, and then I rang... <laughs> um, but this is money. <laughs> so I spoke to Vern, then I rang Fran, who was, me, who was me as nurse in Dargaville, and June, who then rang Dan, and pretty much from there, everyone jumped on board and helped us out. We, um, the teachers at Salmon Park School used the kit and taught um, the classes um, some of the lessons that were in the rheumatic fever kit, how you get it, the symptoms, what causes it. Um, June and Dan, they brought over the tents on the day, information packs, br prizes, bracelets, balloons, um, chatterbox thingies that the kids make up. Um, the whole community came on board pretty much. Yeah, we also started getting health swabs done, uh, throat swabs. That's right. So that was the other proactive thing that, that I got going was that got the um, district health nurse to, she agreed any time we had kids with sore throats. Teachers were asking every day, she'd come and do a swab. So that hooked in straight away. Um, and newsletters every week reminding parents about that's what yep. we were doing. And if there's anything anything positive, you'll get the call and we will go. Mm. 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 Okay, so we had a lot of the Dargaville community came on board. Um, the district council, fire brigade, North Power, the staff and students and whānau of our school. Also Silverfern Farms, who my husband works for. His work sent a whole lot of workers, um, steak, fried bread, they, they manned the barbecues on the day, everything was free. Um, all of these communities, uh, all of these um, organisations from the community put in teams to carry the kids like Mimi who couldn't do cross country on that day because of the rheumatic fever, carried them on stretches around the paddocks. Um, yeah, it, it was a really good day. Um, the children, I made up boxes like what causes rheumatic fever. The kids wrote their answers in, put them in the boxes. Um, prizes were drawn out on the day. Rheumatic fever posters. The school did um, a competition, so there was posters all around, um, colouring in competitions. Mia's nurse, Fran, she ran a competition on the day. Um, but pretty much, for me, it was the satisfaction that more people in the community were aware of the symptoms of rheumatic fever and how it is caused, um, and the consequences of having it, what causes it, and so on. Um, yeah, pretty much since that day, a lot, a lot of things have come of it, like um, programs in place, the throat swabbing in the schools, the medical centre now has large billboards everywhere, um, the chemist now does throat swabbing. I have been to speak to an organisation called Ngari Po, um, just to tell them about our story so that they're aware about rheumatic fever. Um, Te Kōpuru School used the boxes that I made up and they ran competitions in their school. And oh yeah, also the kids at Salwan Park, um, they know a lot, a lot of information about rheumatic fever now because Mia was one of their own, so it was personal to them. Yeah, yeah. they saw the effects first hand and um, through Mimi's me, 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 me journey with the rheumatic fever the community was kept up to date all the time and used it exactly what was happening to her. And it was you know, reasonably graphic. They got the full facts, there was no hiding it. Mm. So the awareness was hugely heightened and um, the support from health promoting schools and the health 
um, community in general was fantastic. Mm. It? Yeah, it was really, Definitely. Yeah. The people that came to our cross country was massive. I mean, you know, we usually maybe get mm -hmm. 20 people turn up to watch our kids run because it's in the working day. The school was full, absolutely chocked with people. Um, and not all just not all just members of our school community, but the wider wider community in Dartle, so it was great. Mm -hmm. yeah. From about May last year um, to three weeks ago, there were absolutely no cases of rheumatic fever in all camp. Mm. And the first one that we had was three weeks ago, and that was not one that would have been picked up by throat swelling. So that's how far the um, message has been spreading. So, and it's all from, from Fano. It wasn't from it wasn't from me. It wasn't from Ben. It was from Fano. It was Nicky getting on board and everyone jumping on board with it. Got a now, being permanently wheelchair bound hasn't stopped Darker or give Joseph Tebbets from taking out first place at the school cross country. Well, this is Erica's son, the, the other parent that Nicky worked with. And charity fundraiser. His friend and fellow pupil, Mia Pinney, also didn't let a serious bout with rheumatic fever stop her from partaking in the fun either. These two young battlers from Selwyn Park Primary School were supported by friends and family to partake in the charity cross-country fundraiser, which saw them being carried on stretches by teams of volunteers in a race which raised funds for the Northland Emergency Services Rescue Helicopter. The duo managed to raise just over $900 from today's event. Joseph and Mum Erica is overwhelmed by the community support. doing laps around the courts and stuff, but now it's come to the day where it's the real thing, so that was amazing. <laughs> it's been amazing. I mean, this has taken a few weeks to put this together, but everyone has turned up, they've had a great mm -hmm. attitude, they've awesome. got out there, they've got mud and poo all over them, but it's for a good cause. We've raised probably by the end of it, been well over a thousand dollars for the Northern Rescue Chopper. And we also had a car tent here today, uh, raising awareness about rheumatic fever, which of course is at an epidemic level in Northern. No, I think everyone did amazing today. Um, yeah, hats off to all, everyone that's participated, donated. Yeah, I, I'm overwhelmed. It's been really, really cool. Thanks to our school. Yeah. It's been really great. Yes, it has. Yeah. Yeah, no, really good. Again, same thing. Absolutely. If it's going to help prevent another child getting rheumatic fever, absolutely. And if it's going to help someone that may need the rescue helicopter, yep. Without a doubt. Yeah. So part of today's run was to is to help raise awareness for rheumatic fever. Um, what sort of things should parents out there be looking for with regards to to that? What what was your experience? Okay, so Mia had, um, she actually had a lot of the symptoms, but she didn't get them all at the same time. So she did have sore throats, which she had medication for. Um, she got fevers um, towards, uh, just before she got admitted, she started getting a rash um, that would come and go um, quite quickly. Um, what were some of the other symptoms you had? Heart palpitation as well. What did it feel like? <laughs> 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 so what message basically would you like to drive home to a parent that's having a child that's got a sore throat and those sort of symptoms? What would you say? So for the child has a sore throat, definitely get them checked. Ask for a swab and make sure you know what the results are. I was just going to ask, did the um, medical centre change the processes? Yes, they did. Yes. So that was one of the outcomes or one of the uh, mood changes? Mm, it systems today? changed. Yeah, systems changed. Yep. And safe to say we changed processes at school too. Um, because of it. So. And the rheumatic fever nurse that um, was in charge of rheumatic fever at that project 
did so well, and because there was no rheumatic fever for a year, she's no longer the coordinator because she lost her job. Makes it up redundant, like <laughs> Andy was talking about. So that's how well with the project went. <laughs> Any other when Fano actually have agency and sometimes they get a bad rap that they can't do anything, they can't help, they can't do this, they can't do that, and sometimes we look at them more in a deficit way. But in terms of when you look at sometimes the answers actually with the Fano, and when we move out of the way, they actually take responsibility and um, like to acknowledge the school and that for those things to occur. So I'd like to acknowledge them and give them a big hand for their presentation.